Hello everybody, this is Simon with Let's Play Mega Man Tertium. Hmm, which of the two remaining ones are we going to take today? Um, uh, maybe the one whose color scheme fits, obviously. And he's kind of too big for his frame. Darkman's level is not a level I particularly like, mostly because I hate instant death. I do think it is pretty well designed though. This first fact section, however, kind of sticks out because uh, it is completely irrelevant to the rest of the level, basically. It is the only time in the game where you see these fish and I feel it's like just an excuse to put them in. This is how the real level looks like. It's all spikes all the time, very Bubble Man-esque. And uh, combined with the somewhat floaty jumping physics of Mega Man Tertium, it is not too fun in my opinion. However, as said, it does have its moments. It also doesn't waste any time to put out the whales, it does waste time however with the slowdown because whenever the four projectors are coming down the engine is really struggling. It does have quite a few new things going for it which we haven't seen so far in any um, underwater spike level, for example this one block tile gap which you can slide through. And um, as you might have noticed, Skull Shield is now upgraded and it can actually block bullets. If you do not crash it on the mat itself, it is actually quite powerful, especially in this level. It is pretty nice. Also, the bullet shooting mats are placed really well in my opinion and uh, contribute a lot to making this level feel a unique challenge, not just haha, <laughs> there are spikes everywhere. There still are spikes everywhere and I hate jumps like this one here, but I do not think it's too bad. I would much prefer, however, if the spikes were an instant kill. Again, it's just a pet peeve of mine, but I do think that it is kind of understandable, right? This one is just there to troll you, basically. Not the real way to jump into it, I think. These guys here can be killed and only be killed by Dust Crusher. Um, not pulling it out, of course the jump is easy enough, we've seen most of those already. Coming up here is proof that maybe it's not a complete and utter dick move to have one of these come out in front of you in Dustman. The squeezing room is pretty tight, he only gets off one jump, I do not really know if the health is lower than in the NES version, um, but it doesn't really matter. Second veil, as inconsequential as the first, it is really not too hard to uh, deal with those guys. You can uh, pump out a lot of damage and I do like that. Mini bosses should be uh, quick and easy on the trigger finger and um, prove, uh, prove a somewhat reliable challenge but not be too hard and time consuming that is. These jumps here again not too hard, but you do get introduced to the Manta Rays at the same time, so it is definitely tougher again than the NES game, but we have come to expect that. The real meat of the level starts now with the rising and falling water, which I've always really liked in the NES, and it's no different here, they do a lot with it. Very fortunate that this Manta Ray turned around, he tends to do that, but not always, it is kind of strange. The big problem here is that you have to wait out things like here, for example, if you rush that then you are dead, it's kind of a dick move, yeah? Especially because it gets a real tight squeeze at the end if you have rushed too much, and here, if you shoot too early, the shot will bounce off the mine and the manta ray will get unharmed to you, which I do feel was very much intended. These squeezes are also very, very tight, but at least they are not between two spikes and you do really want to uh, wait for the water to extend completely upwards before doing all of these jumps here and um, uh, Otherwise you run the risk of uh, the thing happening which just happened to me now Also, I kind of like this is the one level where you do not need rush I thought you needed for this section, but I had misremembered you can actually do this without Again taking it very nice and slowly still the manta ray respawned and here you should really jump my bad and a mistake that is actually going to cost me quite a lot in that I will have to use an E-Tank at the end, but uh, it's not too big of a deal I feel and not really warranting re-recording, because if you're going to see in a second after this here wastes our time, but as I said, take it slow, you really do not want to fuck up at the end. Dive Man is actually probably the hardest boss in this game, well not probably, it, it, it is, except for the final boss, maybe. Um, mostly because you cannot easily cheese him now. <laughs> the thing is, you will probably float away from this guy and the missiles he shoots out, you really really do not have time to take them out before he comes to you again. It is very very frantic and these fuckers, they chase you for quite a long time. 
Um, they can be scrolled off screen and despawned, but it really doesn't happen all that often, really not as often as in the NES game. So the only thing I really find somewhat reliable against him, other than tanking a lot of damage, is leading them around in a loop like I just did completely by accident, I will not ever claim to be good at this fight, and, well, basically try to end it as fast as possible. At least we got Dive Missile for our efforts, which as always is pretty good just for the fact that it is homing and it's got a nice newer ability, again in this game, in being able to pierce quite a few enemies and just fly on. Thank you very much for your attention!